Good morning, Bradley Elementary. It's 1030, and it is time for Mr. Saxton Reads in the AM. We've got a bear theme going today. We've got a couple Berenstain Bear books, and then The Bear and the Piano. So all about bears. We've been doing a lot of pirates, but today we got the bears. Here we go. The Berenstain Bears, New Neighbors. I wonder how long it will be empty, said Sister Bear. She was talking about the house across the road. The family that lived there had moved to Big Bear City. Now the house was empty and had a for sale sign on it. It's hard to say, said Papa Bear. I don't think it will be empty very long, said Mama. It's a very nice house. I just hope whoever moves in has cubs, said Brother Bear. Especially girls, said Sister. Just then, Mrs. McBear, the real estate person, drove up and stopped in front of the empty house. She got out of her car and hammered a sold sign over the for sale sign. How about that, said Papa. Somebody bought it already. He called across the road. Say, Mrs. McBear, who will be moving in? Hi, Bear family, she said. Can't talk now, too busy. Then she got into her car, waved, and drove away. Hmm, said Papa. That's not like Mrs. McBear. She usually has plenty to say. Maybe she doesn't know who'll be moving in, suggested Mama. Of course she knows, said Papa. Whoever it is, she sold them the house, didn't she? I suppose so, said Mama, but I don't know what difference it makes. It makes a lot of difference, said Papa. It's important who your neighbors are. I just hope whoever moves in has cubs, said Brother, especially girls, said Sister. Papa's a little worried that maybe he's not going to like who moves in. Over the next few days, the bears went about their business. Papa worked in his wood shop, and Mama had a lot of tulip bulbs she wanted to plant. Brother and sister went to school in the morning and came home in the afternoon. And once in a while, they wondered what their new neighbors would be like. Would they be young or old? Would they be friendly? Or would they keep to themselves? Hey, said brother early one morning, our new neighbors are moving in and they do have cubs. Sister ran to the window. Any girls, she said. Yep, said brother, two girls and one boy. And look, the boy is into sports. At least he's kicking a soccer ball around. Come on, sis, let's go play. Those are different kind of bears, though. They're panda bears, not the bears that the bears are. Now, hold on, please, said Mama, who had joined the cubs at the window. But Mama, said Sister, it's Saturday and we don't have to go to school. We've got to give them a chance to get moved in, said Mama. They will do look like a lovely family. We'll all go over later and welcome them. Hmm, said Papa, looking out the window. Now, who do you suppose they are? He added in a grumpy tone of voice. And what do you suppose they're doing there, here? What does that mean? What do you suppose they're doing here? They just moved in next door, Papa Bear. Well, said Mama, I suppose they're the panda family because that's just what they've painted on their mailbox. And as for what they're doing, I suppose they're doing the same thing we are, living here. What's the matter, Papa? Asked Sister. Don't you like them? That's not it, he said. It's just, it's just that they're different, that's all. Well, different or not, said Mama, as they sat down for breakfast, Today, they are our new neighbors, and later today, we're going to welcome them with a jar of our special honey. Uh oh Papa maybe doesn't like them because they're different. You ever thought of somebody maybe you didn't like because you thought they were different? Besides, she continued, I thought you liked things to be different. When we were at the bulb farm, you complained when I wanted to buy all yellow tulips, get different colors, she said. The cubs agreed with you, so I got yellow, red, and blue. Papa didn't say anything. He just kept eating and looking grumpy. And you always use different kinds of wood in your furniture work, she went on. And if we have the same thing for dinner three nights in a row, you say, not the same thing again. Why can't we have something different? Oh, so Papa Bear likes different things sometimes. But he's kind of grumpy. That's different, grumped Papa Bear as he left the breakfast table. 
Just look at that, would you? Looking out the window. Before you start giving away all our special honey, I think you should have a look at what our new neighbors are doing. They're hardly even moved in and they're building a fence, a spiked fence. Oh, he thinks that because they're building a fence, that means they don't like anybody. I think the bears have a fence around our house. What's a spike fence, Papa? Asked Sister. Mama looked out the window and saw the pandas did seem to be putting up some sort of fence. Though it didn't look like any fence she'd ever seen, it looked more like a row of sticks. A spike fence, said Papa, is a fence that bad neighbors put up just for spite. They do it just to be mean and keep decent folks from seeing what they're up to. I'm sure there's an explanation, Mama said. She was back in the kitchen, putting a big red bow on a jar of special honey. Hermph, said Papa. I was saving that honey for a special occasion. New neighbors are a special occasion, she said. Oh, he is really grumpy. Super grumpy. Hi, neighbors, said brother. We're brother and sister bear. He and sister had decided not to wait for the family welcoming visit. We live in that big treehouse across the road. I'm Peter Panda, said the new cub. These are my sisters, Pam and Patty. The new cubs were very friendly, and pretty soon one and all were busy talking about the things cubs talk about. It turned out that Peter Panda not only had a soccer ball, but he was a soccer whiz. But he didn't know much about baseball or football. He agreed to show Brother some soccer moves if Brother would teach him about baseball and football. Sister Pam and Patty were already working up a sweat, jumping rope. Oh, the kids didn't have much of a time making friends. They got it going on. And it turned out that the spike fence wasn't even a fence at all. It was a row of bamboo. It's our favorite food, explained Peter. Mom is a great bamboo cook. She must have 50 recipes. Our favorite food is honey, said brother. We're going to bring you a jar of it later. Oh, it's like a garden, a bamboo garden. That afternoon, the whole bear family came over to welcome their new neighbors with a jar of special honey. The bears and pandas had a very pleasant visit. Even Papa had a good time. He found Mr. Panda, who had traveled all over the world, to be a very interesting fellow, and he especially enjoyed the chilled bamboo juice that Mr. Panda served. Well, what do you know? They got to know them, and they had a good time. Mama arranged a neighborhood welcome at the community center for the next weekend. It was a covered dish supper, and Mrs. Panda's barbecued Bamboo shoots were the hit of the evening. All right, so you never know. You never know. All right, here's our next book about a bear, the bear, and the piano. This one looks pretty cool. One day in the forest, a young bear cub found something he'd never seen before. What could this strange thing be, he thought, and shyly he touched it with his stubby paws. Bonk! The strange thing made an awful sound. So the bear left, but the next day he came back, and the day after that too, and for days and weeks and months and years until eventually... I wonder what, what, what happened eventually... Eventually, the sounds that came from the strange thing were beautiful, and the bear had grown big and strong and grisly. And when the bear played, he felt so happy. The sounds took him away from the forest, and he dreamed of strange and wonderful lands. Well, he's a giant bear who now knows how to play the piano. It wasn't long before the other bears in the forest were drawn to the clearing. Every night a crowd gathered to listen to the magical melodies coming from the bear and the strange thing. Oh, they still don't know it's a piano. Then one night, a girl and her father came across the clearing. 
They told the bear that the strange thing was a piano and that it sounds, it, the sounds it made were music. Come to the city with us, they said. There is lots of music there. You can play grand pianos in front of hundreds of people and hear sounds so beautiful, they will make your fur stand on end. The bear knew that if he left the forest, the other bears would be very sad. But he longed to explore the world beyond the woods to hear more wonderful music and to play bigger and better than before. And before long, here he goes, headed off to the city. The bear's name was up in the big bright lights in the big bright city. The bear and the piano. You won't believe your ears or your eyes. Become famous. He played sold out concerts in giant theaters. Every night he performed with such passion and such grace to wild applause and standing ovations and huge admiration. The bear recorded albums that went platinum. He was interviewed for magazines. He won awards. He met new people every day and created headlines everywhere he went. He is a famous bear that plays the piano. The city was everything he'd hoped it would be, but deep down something tugged at the bear's heart. He had fame and awards and all the music in the world, but he missed the forest. He missed his old friends. He missed his home. So the bear decided to go back. He speedily crossed the river and excitedly pounded into the forest. He couldn't wait to tell his friends about the time in the city. But when the bear reached the familiar clearing, it was empty. No piano, no bears, no anything. The bear started to worry that his friends had forgotten him or that they were angry that he had left them behind. Uh-oh. Then a friend stepped into the clearing. Hello, cried the bear. I'm back. I've missed you so much. And without saying a word, the gray bear ran into the trees. Wait, called the bear. I'm sorry I left. Please stop. But his friend just kept running. The bear stumbled after him, moving deeper and deeper into the forest until he saw something that made his fur stand on end. For his bear, for the bear had not been forgotten. His friends weren't angry, but proud. The bear realized that no matter where he went or what he did, they would always be there watching from afar. They had even kept the piano safe in the shade, ready for his return. Oh, they're proud of him. So after the bear had told his friends about his life in the city and the many concerts he had played, he sat down to play once more, this time for the most important audience of all, his buddies. All right. Okay. And lastly, another bear book. The Bernstein Bears lend a helping hand. I thought this was a good one because it is Mother's Day coming up. And so that's a good time to lend a helping hand to your mom or your grandma or somebody you know who is a mom. All right. Here we go. Mama and Papa Bear were like most parents. They wanted the best for their cubs. Brother and sister were like most cubs. They wanted the best for themselves. Not only the best, but the biggest and the most as well. The best place in front of the TV, the biggest piece of cake, and the most jelly beans. Oh, they're kind of selfish.
One night when the scobbling cubs were sound asleep, Mama lay awake worrying. She sighed a big sigh. Was that a sigh, asked Papa, turning over, or just the wind whistling through the leaves of our treehouse? We've got to find a way of teaching brother and sister to mend their selfish ways, she said. Do you have any suggestions? But zzzz was Papa's only suggestion. He had fallen asleep, leaving Mama alone with her thoughts. I've got to find a way, thought Mama, to teach them that it's just as important to help others as it is to help themselves. But how? Lecturing wasn't worked. Nagging hadn't worked. And having Papa talk to them seems to do more harm than good. I think Papa likes to yell. As Mama lay there, she thought about how cubs learn. Cubs learn by doing. They learn to walk by walking. They learn to run by running. And they climb by climbing. That's the answer, thought Mama. The cubs will learn to help others by helping others. But questions of who and when and where, where went unanswered as she drifted off to sleep. As it happened, those questions would soon be answered. The who turned out to be Ms. McGriz, the elderly widow who lived just down the road. The when turned out to be the very next day, and the where turned out to be the checkout line at the supermarket. Hello, Ms. McGriz, said Mama as she emptied her cart at the checkout counter. Hello yourself, said Miss McGriz. How are you and yours? Just fine, said Mama. Some of mine are over there looking at the videos. Cubs, say hello to our neighbor. Hi, Ms. McGriz, said brother and sister. The cubs were a little nervous about Ms. McGriz. She was really old, even older than Gramps and Graham, and kind of bent over. And there was that crookedly clean cane she used when she walked. But the real reason they were nervous about her was that their ball had gone into her yard and knocked over some tulips. They had never apologized. Oh, no. Sometimes if you do things that are an accident, you just say you're sorry. When Mama and the cubs were loading their groceries into the car, Ms. McGriz came out of the supermarket pushing her little collapsible cart. Where are you going, called Mama. To the bus stop, she said. The bus goes right by my house. So does our car, said Mama. Cubs, help Miss McGriz put into the car and put her things in the trunk. That's very kind, said Miss McGriz, as sister helped her into the car. My goodness, she added, as brother put her things in the trunk. It must be wonderful to have such helpful cubs. Yes, it is, said Mama, as she started the car. Most of the time... It certainly would be wonderful for me, said Ms. McGriz. Oh, said Mama. When the cubs realized they were being talked about, they leaned forward to hear better. Yes, said Ms. McGriz. I need a little help with something. By now, brother and sister were leaning so far forward that their seatbelts were pulling at them. Hmm, thought Mama. Maybe this is the chance I've been looking for, the chance for brother and sister to learn to help others. I wonder, said Ms. McGriz, and this is just a thought, but I wonder if perhaps brother and sister could find the time to help me clean up of my attic. It's an awful mess. I'd pay them, of course. Brother and sister looked at each other. They didn't say anything, but their expression spoke volumes. Help Miss McGriz clean her attic? What about soccer? What about listening to records with Lizzie? What about playing video games with Cousin Fred? Well, I, for one, think that's a wonderful idea, said Mama. Cubs, how does next Saturday sound? She pulled the car in close to Ms. McGriz's house. Next Saturday, said the Cubs. Uh-oh, they don't want to give up their own time, but sometimes you got to give up your own time to help others. Then it's a deal, said Mama. Hop to it, Cubs. Let's help Miss McGriz get her things to the house. As the Cubs slipped away, they saw, oh, as the Cubs helped, they saw the next Saturday slipping away in the dusty haze of a miserable, boring attic. When they were about to head home, Mama turned to Miss McGriz. As for paying brother and sister, she said, they wouldn't think of accepting money for being nice to a neighbor. When the Cubs complained to Papa about Ms. McGriz's attic, it turns out that he was even more enthusiastic about the idea than Mama. Cubs, I'm proud of you. I think it's grand of you to volunteer to help poor old Ms. McGriz. But Papa, we didn't exactly volunteer, said brother in a small voice. 
Nevertheless, said Papa, it's a wonderful thing you're doing. I think you may find it interesting. You never know what you might find in an old lady's attic. Well, here we are, said Ms. McGriz. They were indeed. A strange feeling came over the cubs as they looked at the piles of old things. It was as if they had walked into the middle of her whole life. There was a dressmaker's dummy with half a dress pinned to it. There were old magazines, and there was an amazing ship in a bottle. Wow, said Brother. It has all the rigging. That was my late husband's hobby, explained Miss McGriz. Careful now, she said. These steps are rather rickety. What is this, asked Sister? A radio, of course. A radio? It looks like a cathedral. Do you think it still plays, asked Brother. Let's plug it in and find out. Well, they're finding all kinds of treasures. Brother plugged it in and turned it on. Music came pouring out of the strange old radio. Rock music. As the Cubs stood listening to rock music coming out of a radio that looked like a cathedral, they had the funniest feeling about how time works. It went back into the past and forward into the future, but now it was the present and they had work to do. Papa was right. Miss McGriz's attic was kind of interesting. Miss McGriz organized two really big boxes. One was marked throwaways and the other was marked keepers. You know, said brother, we're going to have to have a system if we ever going to get this job done. Miss McGriz agreed. Here's what they did. They sat Miss McGriz in a comfy old chair and brought things for her to decide. And when she looked at each and said, keep it or chuck it. But as the morning went on, the cubs began to worry. It seemed brother and sister that she was chucking some pretty interesting things and they were beginning to get an idea. It was just before lunch when the cubs found some really interesting things. What's this, Miss McGriz? asked sister. It looks like a really old Barbie doll. A really, really old Barbie doll. That's what it is. It's the original Barbie when I had when I was a cub. Then Brother Box found an old box of cards. Baseball cards. I can hardly beat my eyes, he says. This looks like the Babe Bruin rookie card. That's probably what it is, said Miss McGriz. My late husband was a big Babe Bruin fan. After lunch in the attic, the cubs told her their idea. There's a lot of great stuff in here, said brother. You shouldn't throw it away. But what should I do with it? She asked. Have a garage sale, said sister. Goodness, I don't know about that. I don't have a, yard, a garage. You have a yard? Have a yard sale, said sister. And that's what happened. Mama and Papa pitched in and helped. The very set next Saturday, Miss McGriz had one of the most successful yard sales ever held in the neighborhood. Miss McGriz appreciated the Cubs' help very much and wanted to pay them something, but Mama still wouldn't hear of it. She did allow them to accept gifts, however. Love yard sales. They're the best. Miss McGriz gave sister the original Barbie doll that she had when she was a cub, and she gave brother the Babe Bruin rookie card. Wow, said sister. Double wow, said brother. All right. So sometimes when you think it's going to be miserable helping somebody, it actually turns out to be kind of fun. Okay? And, and when you help somebody, you, yeah, you don't want to take money because when you're helping, you're helping. That's different than a job. Okay, so we hope that maybe you get a chance to help somebody out this weekend. Maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your grandma, your sister, somebody who uh, is special to you. So with that, we'll see you back here at 1.30 today for the last chapter of Peter and the Star Catchers. Stay Bradley strong and go Bears!